Hello everyone and welcome to Hack on Tuesday. I am Gian Ignesa and today for the fourth episode of the Hack on Tuesday video podcast, we'll take a look at some common techniques we can use to test a Postgres database. So without further ado, let's get started. As always, the first step is to identify the listening services on the target machine. To do that, we can use our favorite tool, Nmap. So let me go back to my machine open a terminal and run nmap as always I'll scan all the ports This is going to take a while. Perfect. So here we have the list of open ports on the tar on the target machine. Among them there is also TCP port 5432. Uh, this port is where the Postgres instance is waiting for incoming uh, connection. So for this episode we'll focus on this port. Now, since Metasploits comes with a brute force login tool for Postgres, the next step is to launch it against the target and see if we can find some weak credentials. So let's open a new tab. And launch Metasploit. Once Metasploit is ready, we can search for the Postgres login utility module with the search command. So let's type search Postgres and this module can be found in the auxiliary scanner Postgres and it's called Postgres login. So. So in order to use it, uh, to, in order to use this module, we must set the R hosts uh, variable to the IP address of the target machine. So in this case, it's 192.168.75.149. After that, we can simply type run because the user file and the path file are already set. So let's type run. As you can see, this model is pretty fast with the default word list and in some cases it can even find valid credential as shown in this example where the use of uh, Postgres as username and Postgres as uh, password uh, was successful. So let's gather some additional information about the database using the credential we just found. username postgres and password postgres so first let's get the version of postgres and then check if it's running as root usually it's not but since this is a ctf vm it may be the case so uh, to get the version of Postgres, we can uh, use the version function. So simply type select version 
and press enter. So in this case we are dealing with Postgres, Postgres SQL 8.3.1. Now um, let's check let's check if Postgres is running as root. Uh, to do that we can use uh, select user. So it's not. In this case, uh, Postgres is not running as root, which means we have a uh, limited access to the system. That being said, it doesn't mean that we cannot use the privileges we have to uh, compromise the system. It just means it's going to take us uh, a little extra to do that. So, um, so let's see if we can read files from Postgres. And to do that, first we need to create a table. Create a table, let's call it my file, my file with one column text. So this table uh, has one column and is and we are gonna use it to store the content of the file we want to read. So once we have the table we can use the copy command, copy um, my, my file from etc, password e, enter. So this command copies the content of the etc password e file into our table and now to get the content of the password the file we can simply uh, select the input column from the my file table and there it is here we have the content of the etc password the file now at this point, it's safe to assume that we have read access. Of course, we will not be able to read every file, but we will be able to read a good number of files and most likely files in the temp directory. So, since we have read access, the next question to answer is what about write access? Well, let's use the same technique to test if we can create files on the target machine. So, in order to do that, we'll create another table. I'll create a table called test file output text insert file output values test and again we can use the copy command test file output to temp test file okay that's great now if we go back to the metasploitable VM we'll see I, I actually already log in with the MSF admin credentials so if we check the content of temp we'll see we have also a test file and if we check the content of that file we'll see we, c we have the test string so in other words we have read access and we have write access that is very good especially because if we are able to write on the temp directory we can use the Metasploit uh, Postgres payload module to get code execution. This module, it's a very popular module. So let me show you. Chris. 
This module is a very popular module if you, if you deal with Postgres uh, instances on a regular basis. On a regular basis. It uh, take advantage of the fact that uh, in some cases you have the ability to uh, create files in the temp directory and when you can do that you can create a shell library in the temp directory and get code execution by loading that uh, shared library. So this is basically what this module does and this is what we are going to try to do now. So let's um, check what options are required to run this module. So apparently um, there are not many things are required. The only parameter that we need to specify is the our host variable. So in this case the our host is 192, 168, 75, 149. And um, once we have that set we can simply type exploit. This is not going to take longer. As you can see, it's already setting the stage and there we have it, our meterpreter session. So at this point, uh, we can interact with the system using uh, the command in we, we know, like for example, sysinfo that will tell us some information about the, the system, about the remote system. In this case, we have uh, uh, Linux 2.6.24, which uh, if you are a bit familiar with uh, kernel exploits, you will remember as one of the most uh, interesting version of Linux because it's vulnerable to several uh, exploits. Now the good part of this, um, of this version is the fact that many exploits are also available inside of Metasploits. Among them there is um, the udevnet uh, link and um, so for the next step let's try to escalate to root using a local privilege escalation exploit so let's put this um, session in the background and use exploit Linux local udev net link. So this is a very popular um, kernel exploit and it basically take advantage of the fact that um, a local user can send uh, net link messages from user land to the kernel and uh, that's not supposed to happen. This uh, module take advantage of that uh, vulnerability to get root access. So um, let's see the options of this module. Well, as you can see, we have uh, only to specify the session. In this case, the session is one and type exploit. After a few seconds we should see the second meterpreter uh, session and there it is and if we type U UID we will see actually let's just uh, type shell and who am I and there it is, we are root. So we can access every file, like for example, etc shadow. So there we have it. We finally uh, managed to get root access on the Linux server. Now I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I try to keep them short, but uh, informative and um, if you have any idea for a future episode of hack on tuesday please feel free to uh, ping me on twitter facebook or linkedin and for any question feel free to leave a comment down below thank you very much and see you next week